Hello, Uncle Sam FM here with episode 9 of my American Football 19 series. And let's bring you up to date. So, Brazos Valley, I did finish the 2020 season. And it went pretty swimmingly, as a lot of our competition was, well, not very good, just to be perfectly frank. So, let's look at the schedule. Um, I finished the season undefeated in the Mid-South. Um, won all my matches, no draws. Some were a little crazy, like this match against Labrilla. I ended up having to get a couple late goals to make the difference there, but managed to get through the regular season undefeated. Went into the playoffs, won the Southern Conference playoffs, beat Miami City in the semifinal 2-0. Had a pretty intense game with the Charlotte Eagles, where they got a couple of free uh, set-piece goals, which mean, meant that I had to get the winner late from Tim Woodbury, but I got it. So we won 3-2, to two, and then we headed into the national semifinal. Played Portland Phoenix. They had a man sent off about the 30-minute mark. So I played for over an hour of the match with, um, with a man advantage. Uh, and I'll let me move my little um, guys here. I um, yeah, didn't find the winners until super late. Um, had to go to extra time. Clinton Jackson with the goal in the 95th minute. And then my uh, backup winger, Charlie Garza, uh, gets a goal to kind of kill it off in the in the second minute of extra time stoppage. Like literally the, pretty much the last kick of the ball. So so I won 2-0, to zero, made it to the final, played against TSS FC. My, the second year in a row I had to play them in the final four. Last season I played them in the national semifinal. This year the national final. Again, they had a man sent off, but it wasn't until extra time. Still couldn't find the goal with that man advantage. Went to penalties, and their penalty, their last two penalty makers missed. Um, so I won on penalties 3-2 to two and won the league championship. Uh, I did final at last. The first year I won the, I won the league two championship, the national championship, and did not win the manager of the year, but this time I did. I got the manager of the year award. My goalkeeper, actually my second team goalkeeper, got the best goalkeeper of League Two. And the reason my backup goalkeeper got it was because my starting goalkeeper was playing in the Open Cup. So that meant that my number two goalkeeper was getting more appearances. And end of the season, with he, he had nine starts in league play and had six sh uh, shutouts or clean sheets. And so that was the difference. A um, couple had two or three defenders on the all league team. So, successful season. Now, after the 2019 season with Brazos Valley, I had tried, I went looking around, dipping my feet in the water to see what other managerial jobs I could find. I was really looking for a job in NCAA soccer, college soccer here in the United States. And I, um, the closest I got to one probably was the University of Michigan. But they had, they told me that it was too late in the process or something like that. Like I, they had stopped taking applications. So, so didn't get that job. Uh, kind of bummed about that and ended up staying at Brazos Valley. Now, as soon as the League Two Championship match was over, TSS FC, I, I win. I start again, keeping my eye on jobs that came open. And come late October, early November started seeing some jobs in in the NCAA come come available and so I started I just started applying one of them was to Cal State Fullerton and what they told me was they didn't think that they were going to be able to afford to pay what Brazos Valley was going to demand and I didn't even know that was a thing in in football managers so I said okay well then I'm leaving and I left Brazos Valley I resigned Walked out the door, <clears throat> thanks for everything, but I'm out, and ended up getting the job at Michigan State. That is now where I am, Michigan State University. I'm pretty excited about that, actually. Um, it's an interesting job. Um, just a little background on Michigan State. Michigan State, uh, they, their soccer program started in the mid-50s. Uh, I don't remember the coach's name, but uh, he started the program, kind of built it up. I believe he won the national championship twice. Yeah, we'll look at their history. 
yeah, so they've won the national championship twice. Um, won the Big Ten Conference, which is the kind of the regular season. Won that one time. They won the Big Ten Tournament four times. So they've got a decent soccer history at Michigan State. Um, of course, their big rivals is the University of Michigan, who I well, tried to get the job at last year but did not. So that'll be an interesting little rivalry um, between us and them. I um, the, the good thing kind of about the Big Ten, which is they play in the Big Ten Conference, um, and all nine of the Big Ten teams get into the play into the tournament to the conference tournament. So no matter how badly I do in the conference play, I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna qualify for the tournament, have a chance to make it to the national tournament. Obviously, I plan on plan on on doing well this season, which college soccer is still going on in my game. They're uh, in the conference tournaments right now. But this season, Michigan State finished dead last in conference play. They won two, lost six. Um, they did not do so well. I know, I know they didn't do great in there. We'll, we'll just look at the schedule. In the non-conference play, they didn't do very well there either. Got a couple of wins, beat Central Arkansas, Campbell. Um, they did get a win against UNLV, who also was really terrible. I, I even... Had thought about applying for that job so you're talking about a team that's you know it's overall nationally they're probably kind of in the mid-range um, area right now within their conference they're the bottom they are the bottom feeders so my my mission is going to kind of be to build them up now Looking at the squad, and they'll be they'll not be a live com in this one because I don't. We're still like they're done. They've been eliminated, and college soccer still going on. So we won't we won't see any games. But um, I thought it would be good to kind of look at how this is going to have to work because the thing about college soccer, and I've got it set up in the database to to function as close to real life as possible. I can't have anybody that's over twenty three. So as you kind of scroll through the squad, you see they already have some guys who are over 23, shouldn't be on the team. I don't know why they're still on the team. They, they should have been released. Um, like this guy's 24, Juarez. It'd be great to have him, but he's too he's too young or too old, so he's got to go. <clears throat> um, Gat, which that's a tough loss. I mean, he's, he's got, I think it was his tackling. Yeah, he's got a 15 in tackling, which would have been really good that one in determination really stinks but um still would like to have had him but he's 23 so he's not gonna be able to play next year i'm gonna wait till after the mls super draft just in case any of my guys get drafted i don't want to release them before they get drafted so but then after the mls super draft i got a clean house of all those older players even the guys who are 22 they're going to be too old uh, to for me to be able to register next year and there's a couple. Schwartz at right back. It's not great, but it, he would have helped with depth. Uh, and I think there was one more 22-year-old somewhere. Yeah, uh, Dixon, another fullback. So um, another, another, I guess, in NCAA soccer, you the idea here is that, okay, you graduate high school, then you go to college, right? That's how it works. Pretty sure that's how it works most everywhere around the world. That's how it works here. So you can't have on a college soccer team 15, 16, you know, even not very many 17-year-old players. So the way I have it set up is nobody under 19 can play. Um, so that means these 17-year-olds are going to be too young. I'm going to keep them. I've only got two, this Caleb Wilson guy and Gibson. I'm going to hang on to them um, unless they start causing too much locker room trouble. But... Uh, they won't be able to. I won't be able to register them next year. So I've gone through the squad and looked at what that means for my depth. Um, and here's the big. Well, looking obviously, the first big glaring deficiency in the team is center back. I only have two that'll be able to play. Um, Cornfield. I really hate not being able to play him because he's got. Yeah, you know, he's three and a half stars, uh, four and a half potential, but he's too old, so he's got to go. And then let's see, was he the only other? He might be the only other center back that's too old. Yeah, so the only two center backs uh, players that I can have that can play center back is Woodthorpe and Benson. 
and neither of those guys are really that good. So <clears throat> I've got to I've got to I've got to strengthen my center back. Really, my whole back line. I've got a couple full backs. I've got two guys I can play on each side, right? So I've got two right backs, two left backs. Um, Carter is going to be my starting right back. It's not terrible. And then Bryant um, will probably be my starting left back, which he is very good. Uh, and his preferred foot is left, so that kind of helps. Uh, you can look at his physicals; those are impressive. Uh, ten determination, not outstanding, but hopefully, maybe through mentoring or something, I can I can build that up a little. But um, he is probably one of the top players I have on the squad. Um, maybe my best player. I have, a good, I have a really good goalkeeper in Garland O'Brien. He's um, yeah, he's. So those are probably my two best players. <clears throat> so fullback, I'm okay. Defensive mid, the, my number six position. I'm probably going to start Jones there. Like I, I was going to start Gat, but then I saw he was 23 and was really bombed. But it's going to kind of be a competition. Jones has a has a 10 in tackling, so that may, sort of makes him the number one candidate. He'll probably be backed up by this guy, Booth, uh, who's not as good a tackler. Um, but... It, Decent work rate, good teamwork. Uh, his positioning, I'm pretty sure positioning was a little better than Jones. Yeah, so so those two guys are probably going to rotate at the number six. Um, my number eight, it's going to have to be Lenny Johnson. Um, you know, he's got decent tackling too, but he is. We've got to get his passing better. That's that's an issue there. And then my number ten, my attacking midfielder. Um, it, that's another position of where I need to make it better. Um, Brooks is probably going to play there for now. He's got decent physicals, but as you can tell, his passing, um, his vision, decision, his decisions is good, and that's probably what's going to win the spot. But he's got to get become a better passer. Got to get better at passing and get better vision. Um, up front, um, you know, it's not not a, not anything to really celebrate there. I've got this Austrian striker, uh, Ansel. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but he's very pacey, so I think that'll help some. And his, you know, 11 finishing, not great, but he has a you know, decent determination. He'll be my starting number nine. Um, Via Lobos will back him up. Who's not much, but he's got good finishing, so he'll be a good guy to bring off the bench and you know maybe get a steal a goal late or whatever. Uh, wingers, I've got kind of a competition going. I'm gonna, gonna be had, had at right wing with Del Campo. Um, he's got really good dribbling and really good pace. Uh, not as good a passer as I would like, and his backup will probably be this guy Daniel Johnson, who uh, his his overall um not quite as good as del campo but i you know i think there's well we can they'll probably compete for that spot the other problem with johnson is that i've got to make him get him where he can play right wing uh, i think it's yeah so he he's he's competent but it needs to get better um Left wing is, is, a, is a position of need. So uh, Candia is really the only left-sided player that I have that can play left wing. Um, so he sort of wins the position by default. I am kind of stoked about that 14 free kick rating. Um, and he does have 15 at dribbling. So, you know, not overly exciting. But, you know, if he, he can be like the... Um, I can't remember the guy's name now. Dor uh Donarellos or whatever from Brazos Valley, who my free kick specialist, who was really only out there to take free kicks from near the area. But um, right now he's he's my left winger. So that brings us to what am I? What are what's gonna be my focus when it comes to acquiring players? Which in in here in America we call with a college team, they're not. Um, they're not buying players, obviously. So we call it recruiting, right? So I've got to go recruiting now. That's what college teams do. So I've got to recruit big time in the back line, especially center back. That is the, my center back is my absolute focus of need. Um, it's there's there's I've got two guys there with zero depth. So I have and the two players I have are not that great. So I've got to build up that center back. 
They uh, this team gave up a lot of goals last year, and their probably their deficiency at center back was a big reason for that. Um, then I need some center mids. Um, the center backs, I need at least three. I'm gonna try and bring in four mid center mids. I need probably two at least. I need a I need a, a number six that can win the ball, and then I need an I need a number eight. Um, really, I, I need to improve the quality at all three positions. Um, so I'm just going to try and find the best player I can there. And then left wing. I can live with what I have at right wing and number nine, but I really need my I need a, I need a left winger better than Candia. Um, and what I've noticed looking through the squad is they don't really fit my style of play. I, you know, I'm, I'm a possession, pass the ball, keep the ball. Um, looking at their stats from this year, um, let's go to squad stats. So their their passing percentages are all in the 60s. My Brazos Valley team, everybody was in the mid to upper 80s at least, and so that is not good. Now, obviously, they they probably played a different style than I did, but even even then, that's that's low. Um, so. That's a bit of a concern, but the, you know the way they play, they're, they're obviously a a kick and chase and dribble team. They're not a they're not a possession team. They've got some pacey wingers. Nobody has great passing numbers, great passing attributes. So they're probably, I'm guessing they were a sit back and counter team, and well, that's frankly that's this is why I'm now the coach here. <laughs> so. I'm um, going to try and mold this squad and recruit a team that can play the way that I want to play. So um, so what's my process going to be? Well, I've gone around to some of the academies. We'll look at um, if it'll... No, these, are my, this, these are the coaches that I'm offering. Um, I've gone around <clears throat> to... Well, you probably won't be able to see it. Um, all the local academies and really just kind of started scouting players. You can't scout the USS like I can't scout the academy division which is frustrating but um, I'm hoping I can at least scout the individual players look for guys that I want <clears throat> and nothing that you can that a lot of what happens a lot in, in NCAA and college soccer is players transfer so um, <clears throat> for example I think I had a player who transferred from Western Michigan well we'll, we'll look at their transfer history Um. Yeah. So here you see, Cornfield. He he came to me. Came to us from Michigan. Um. Lenny Johnson came to us from Detroit Mercy, which is another college. Um. Pribble came to us from Western Michigan. So, and that's real. Like that happens in real life. Players uh, transfer colleges. They decide for whatever reason. I don't want to be here. I want to go there. And so they, they transfer. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of look, poke around at some of the other teams and see if I can find um, players that will fit my style and improve my squad because we have a long way to go before we can um, even think about competing for a Big Ten or National Championship. So, uh, so that's where I'm at. I'm back to school. I am going to try and win the NCAA with Michigan State University. And uh, next episode will probably at least I'll try and do it preseason before I actually begin the 2021 college season so you can kind of see the squad I've built where I'm at what I had to do players that I dumped and then maybe we'll we'll live com the first match so this is Uncle Sam signing off see you next time